2023 Janesville, Wisconsin Regional Art Program. Yay! So Janesville Art League is glad to see that so many of you have chosen to join us for today's workshop. There are 75 pieces of artwork that were submitted by 42 artists from 11 Wisconsin cities. We've got everything from Beloit to wow. Sullivan to Muskego, wow. wow. a whole bunch of Janesville for some reason. Um, <laughs> all right, we've got paintings, we've got multimedia. I'm sure you've all had a chance to walk around. All right, and as you may have noticed, we arranged our workshop around a theme. This year we chose Edward S. Curtis, Image Keeper, How Art Honors History. A little bit about the fella. Photographer Edward S. Curtis is best known for a 20 volume, 20 portfolio collection entitled The North American Indian. For over 30 years, he documented the traditions and lives of Native Americans with audio, video, and photographs. He dedicated his career and his livelihood to this project, recognized today as one of the most extensive and ambitious in Native American publishing history. His art included several different types of photography. He used something called a cyanotype in the field to make test images before creating glass plate negatives. This process gave us the highly detailed images that are his and their legacy. Displayed about the gallery are quotes from this instrumental artist. These signs were made by local sign maker Kurt Bugs, who you have already seen. And they are available for sale for $15. Proceeds from these sales go towards the J Janesville Art League Scholarship Fund. More details about Edward Curtis and his work are on the fantastic display by Karen in the lobby. So, but now, we of course have a judge for this show and she's going to give us a little bit of a presentation today and that is Janet Nelson. Janet, come on down. A Wisconsin native, Janet Nelson has had a Mariah, wow, lots of creative outlets. Ranging from sewing, knitting, and baking when younger, adding painting on furniture and murals in adulthood. These days she enjoys working on canvas and plein air and event paintings, mixing her own colors, and exploring layering, negative, and positive spaces. For her presentation today, Janet will tell us about her creative journey and the artists that have inspired her. For her demonstration, we'll get to see a bit of her artistic process. Please welcome today's judge and presenter, Janet Nelson. Uh, I used to live up in, um, my husband was uh, in the military, retired, and he retired, we moved up to Green Bay. Uh, but prior to that, I took a few courses at, um, we lived in Waukesha, I lived at, uh, took uh, some courses at Carroll College. I happened to get a um, scholarship uh, that was a woman-based kind of thing, and so I was able to pay for a couple of uh, uh, classes. I took um, photography and printmaking, I love printmaking. And uh, so then uh, when we retired and moved up to Green Bay, I was like, well, you know, art is what I wanted to do. So I ended up working at uh, Wildwood Gallery <laughs> and did uh, framing and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think one of the things that really stuck with me was, uh, some of you guys know Terry Redland's artwork in here? Okay. Yeah, I, we sold a lot of Terry Redland artwork, you know, and then I was like, oh, these people coming in for these limited edition prints that were um, 29,500. I always remember that, 29,500 limited edition. Anyways, uh, so um, keep that in mind, you know, uh, uh, reproduction kind of stuff is certainly something that uh, stuck with me. And I ended up uh, moving over to um, uh, Green Bay Art Supply. And uh, I don't know if anybody knows, anybody knew Nancy Hack or anything like that, or up, up there from there. But anyways, I got to play with a lot of different um, media. And of course, Nancy knew all the was in all the art groups that were up there, and so I was um, a member of the Arts Unlimited. And so here we go. <laughs> so we, I was watching a demo by Len Nagler, who is from Appleton, Nina Appleton area, and he was painting on a black canvas, and us, and he was doing oil and all that kind of stuff. Now this is an example of his work. This now it was so long ago that he. Um, that I had to pull this off of his website, and he didn't have his earlier work that really inspired me. But uh, yeah, I loved that, that style. As a matter of fact, a bunch of us from the, the art group, let's get together and paint, and paint on you know, black canvas. I mean, it's not a unique thing, but I mean, it was the first time we had seen that. So anyways, I'm just gonna go here and show you, let's see if I can remember which way to do this. Uh, to the right here, is that the next one? There we go. 
that's another, I'm sorry, I, like I said, I pulled it off his website and uh, so it's still pixelated. So um, just, I just loved his, his style, his sense of whimsy and that kind of stuff. So then, um, let's go on to the next one here. Uh, just a Joy Moons. And Joy Moon, I took a workshop with her. She's from Oshkosh. And she, um, I just was fascinated. Once again, you know, she didn't post the stuff that I was inspired by, but I had to pull something off her website. But she would splash this, uh, this paint all over her, her watercolors. And then she'd go in and she'd like, find shapes in there and I'm like how do you how do you think that way how do you think that way I couldn't think so now this I think is this is a Bridget uh, Bridget Austin and once again look at how she is you know she got the wash down there and, and all these she's finding these shapes by painting in the negative space and I was like how do you think that way <laughs> I mean clearly I think with uh, uh, watercolor you have to do a little bit of planning on that stuff uh, but um, just another one, it's just, you know, just look at how she is able to just make this shape. Clearly she didn't put this in at the end. She put this in, you know, this is one to keep those shapes going on there. And this, this here fascinates me right here. She was able to take and make a tree out of there. All right, so let's see what have we got next. Okay, moving forward. Uh, my husband had to uh, change jobs and we ended up out east. Uh, and uh, so at that time I was looking at uh, trying to find some, I was trying to understand this whole Etsy stuff with the, the hipster kind of look and all that kind of stuff. And I was trying to get the right color and that stuff. I wasn't mixing my paints that I like, you know, to get a color I liked. I wanted this perfect lime green and I couldn't get it. So anyways, I was looking to see what the, what classes were around and um, I found this, uh, Ed, well, Ed Loper. This is Ed Loper Sr. He is um, a regional artist from Delaware, and he um, did a lot of plein air, but he also, he and the guy that took the instruction with, both took instruction or went to the Barnes Museum and got taught. They bought, now, Dr. Barnes had bought a bunch of uh, Impressionist paintings back when they were really cheap and they weren't popular. And so he built this huge museum, this huge mansion, I should say, um, and housed all his artwork. And so, so anyways, you didn't just go in and say, I'd like to take a class. No, you had to be invited and juried in. So anyways, uh, this is um, Ed Loper Sr. Uh, he was an African American. He was the uh, first one to have a solo show at the Delaware Art Museum way back. And, which was uh, rather controversial at the time. But I just loved how his, his color, and obviously, you know, my black influence, you know, but he puts this, this lines in as his sketch, not on the can black canvas. Uh, and while I'm gonna ha make note of a few things right here, you can see these changes of colors and that stuff in these pieces right up there, just very subtle. And he called those toothpicks, so. That I never really learned. Here's another one, plein air. Um, he would go up to, he would take my, the guy that I took instruction from up to Quebec and they would go uh, plein air painting. But this is in Delaware uh, at one of the parks there. This is Al Stazeski. I have a Invisalign first, so I mean, just so you know, if I, if I lisp, you know, or talk funny, it's because of that. Um, anyways, so Al, Al did I just turn that off? No. Al Stazeski was uh, the one he was teaching. He taught painting in the Loper tradition at the Delaware Art Museum. And that's when I saw his work, I said, that, yeah, I'm going to take this class. So I, you know, at, at one time it was like maybe 20 minutes away, and then I moved to New Jersey, and so I drive an hour and a half away to take his class. So I just loved his, his style, how he is, you know. Uh, he was mentored by Ed Loper. And um, so anyways, let's see, I'll get another one here. He would say, um, paint the color you see, because your eye sees like a million colors as opposed to a camera, and paint color next to color. So he would say, because each, you know, the color would, um, in, in, each color would influence each other, you know, going back next to each other. If you got any questions, you know, and you don't understand anything I said, just, you know, go ahead and say, Janet, I didn't understand what you just said. 
Um, so he would start at the highest point of contrast. Let's see, that may be, I didn't figure it out on this one, in this area here. And then he'd start this and he'd work around. He would, he would constantly change his, his wipe, he'd be constantly wiping his brush and before he went on to the next color. And so, so I can tell you that none of these brush strokes contain the same color. There'd be a very slight difference. So he was constantly cleaning his brush, constantly, um, you know, uh, just, you know, to, and he, he wouldn't jump from here to here. It was all the way around like this. Yeah? I'm sorry, is that watercolor? Or yeah, no, this is oil. This is oil. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, he moved to Virginia and I couldn't take his classes anymore. This is one of his later pictures. And I just, he was able to, uh, and he, you know, distort. And, you know, but you have to know how to draw in order to distort. So, Let's see if I got another one of these. Okay. All right, so then Al moved away, and I'm like, I really want to, you know, explore this ne positive negative space also. <laughs> so I was taking a, a, a class online and um, looking around and just trying to understand. Somehow I came across this Charlie O'Sullivan, and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. And, you know, how she was creating these positive images out of this, you know, using negative space to create her images, the positive shapes in that. And I just, I just loved it. I thought, how do you, how do you think that way? You know, once again, how do you think that way? I don't know that I still got figure it figured out, but I mean, I, I, at least I, I'm trying. And I just loved it. I love all the color that she used, just great. So here's a, you know, that's, she painted that one in, but you know, she's got some other negative space going on there. And then I had taken this other class, and this is uh, S.D. McLeod, McLeod, and um, she, and so, you know, you're online, you're taking class with another student, they post their artwork, and so she fascinated me, too. And she just, just how she layered, and some of this, and she would paint over, and sometimes she would paint in between. So, and that's another one, I just like, just great. So, all right, let's see. Now we come to me. <laughs> Go back to like, I'm doing the um, still life at Al's class, you know, and it was like this three weeks of still life and and one three weeks of uh, life life model, and well, you know, after three weeks the still life was no longer there, <laughs> and I wasn't done with my paintings because I was painting the color you see, the exact color you could see, and um, which took a while to train your eye to you know see that, so I started painting over my paintings is what I did. And so this is this is progress. This is a no. Uh, this is not how I started out doing that. But I mean, I just progressed up to this. And uh, so I just was, you know, I thought, well, birds are popular. I think I talked to somebody. You know, it's pretty universal. Birds are uh, as are flowers and that kind of thing. So um, I just was seeing online people just doing these birds and having this stuff behind it. So usually I would. Uh, this one is probably done from scratch. And uh, I put the color down, and then I chalk in just some shapes, and then uh, I just kind of um, then I paint the white, some white, just to define it. Then I go back and say, oh, I want this color, you know, whatever color was back behind it, you know, I just enhance it and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, All right, so I'm doing the other thing again, and once again, I, it's like um, trying to figure out, you know, Esty McLeod and Charlie O'Sullivan's, you know, mind. And um, so I said, well, let's just start. This wasn't the first one I did this way. I'm still trying to figure that out. I lived on the Jersey Shore, and um, so I was, I did a bunch of Jersey icons on there. Oh, so here, you might be able to see right here, I painted over a painting, you know, right here. And so when I think that, when I do that, I just said, what color do I like next to this color? You know, I, I, I tend to like a teal next to an orange, that kind of thing, or even a bright pink next to an orange. So, um, you know, huh? Did you paint the white on top yeah. of the colorful bag? Right, oh. because there's no way I could paint this in after the fact without, you know, having yeah. to go clean it up after the, afterwards. And uh, this this year I just would you know got the my negative shapes but I you know put a, put a few positive shapes in there. I think where was it? Uh, you know I just I always love doing these steps for whatever reason. But, um, and of course you know 
all these kind of fun little stuff. So. And are you using acrylic or oil? I'm using acrylic. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm too messy. <laughs> so acrylics clean up a lot faster. So, all right. So then, um, my um, I posted on LinkedIn. I had my birds on LinkedIn post photo, and I get a an email from uh, Michael Woodward, who was. Um, he, he's a president, he owns Out of the Blue Licensing, who wrote the very first book I'd ever you know, see, you know, read on art licensing. And he contacted me and said, you know, you, are you representative? Would you be represented? Would you like to, you know, be, you know, represented? I thought, oh yeah, great, I've been wanting to do this for forever. And uh, so anyways, uh, he had asked me to do a, um, he had a client that wanted large, floral, all over, with a dark background. <laughs> and uh, I love doing that. And I just, and, you know, I was just had a, um, I just loved it. And so I started doing, well, I can't, I started doing, of course, everything I had was black background. I said, I can't do all black background. I mean, I got it, you know. So I started doing with this with the cream background. So this, I uh, started doing um, um, these all over florals. And I'd take them to the fair, and people would say, oh, that looks like wallpaper. You should do wallpaper. Oh, that looks like fabric. I'd like to see that in fabric. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. You know, so. And um, started to uh, designs on, on fabric and uh, that kind of stuff. So once again, see, I was, you know, moving on from something that, that one was very, I was more concentrated on just getting those negative shapes. And this one here, I had, uh, I did the same way, started out the same way, throw on some green, throw on some, you know, just all like, want this one here, I'm thinking I want that color over there, and then come in and find the, the negative spaces in there, different shapes. And of course, you can see that I then embellished it after the fact here. And, uh, and the, the thing about doing that, that background, I mean, the, uh, you know, putting the color down on before you do that negative spaces, you're able to get texture that you can't get after the fact. And so, um, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, it's just that you can, uh, and it's like you can't get that, they're not as flat, I guess is what you would say. So, but yes, I do embellish it with a size zero brush, and I go over the whole thing practically with a size zero brush. Oh, gosh. All right. Okay. Now, this one, I had done a pink one, a white one, a blue one, a yellow, a warm color, a purple one, and all this kind of thing. And I was like, I gotta do another one, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, so I was like, well, maybe I'll do a multicolor one. And so I was like, oh, threw some colors here, threw some, I even started defining it. And I was like, and then when I can't decide what to do, I'll go in and I'll just, you know, I'm gonna be having leaves in there, why not? You know, and so it's kind of like, I'll go in and define the leaves right away if I can't decide and maybe it'll come to me at that time. And I did that and I was like, no, <laughs> it ain't working. And so I said, well, you know, it's just paint. That's one of the things I like to say, it's just paint. So I threw some paint on top of it, just swatched it, well, let's cover it all, all the color over, I don't care, just cover it over. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, I covered all the things, and then I turned it upside down, because I didn't want it to, you know, get back stuck in the same thing. So, um, right here is where I started, defining that. Uh, and I was like, you know, this here brush stroke here kind of looks really like lacy for whatever reason. And I started putting, oh, that's kind of a cool effect, you know. And I just started painting in like the, uh, maybe there's a lot of it. See, so yeah, I probably got really uh, overused it maybe, I don't know. But um, I just thought that that was, that, that's fun. So, yeah, kind of looks like that, whatever. And see, see the texture I got because I ended up um, painting over it. So. All right, next one, okay, this is a totally different thing and this will, this is just a quick thing to show what I'm doing in addition. So, um, started to, I think, I entered the culture and agriculture show and um, they had bought some of my animals that I had to do with a series of 50 and uh, they, uh, I thought, well, just, they bought them for their new children's clinic and so I thought, 
all right, the next one's coming up, you know, let's do some more animals or something whimsical. So that one got uh, sold to the Culture and English Culture Show. This one is another, that's a why not, uh, you know, animals on heads, you know, animal heads, what the heck. Oh, okay, oh, now this, I had, I had a little uh, uh, Photoshop uh, mistake that I didn't catch. This one uh, I was uh, doing for uh, birds and art. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes, you know, things go, sometimes they don't, so. But uh, it's called, this is called the, the Call of St. Buttermilk. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what my, uh, my son said it should be called. So but I thought I'd put a waffle around there, so whatever. Let's see what it is. Now you have to tell us. Huh? Now you have to tell us. Oh, well, yeah, well, you know, he's a little bit, uh, okay, it's a sacrilegious. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then I started doing um, uh, totems. Yeah, these were always fun. I always sell them. I think the, one of the first things I did when I was practicing doing uh, Len Nagler style was I had done a totem on a, a black, uh, you know, canvas. And so now, okay, but right here I am now over at the Art Hub in Cambridge. I'm the resident artist. They have another space in case you guys are interested. They got classes over there and they've got um, a gallery and stuff like that. So I've got some cards over there if you want to take them. So uh, so I was like, what am I going to do there? I got a studio. Of course, it's all full of stuff. And it's like, well, I live in Cambridge. I really ought to be and uh, you know, yeah. get better known. I do the Earth, Wind, Fire tour and have some stuff at the Cambridge market. But you know, I sometimes need to be interact with me a little bit more. Anyway, so I thought, well, I'll do, uh, I also do plein air, but um, I thought, well, I don't want to stock my studio with my paint, so that I can just drag my cart and just, you know, paint. Uh, I'll, I'll set up still life. I haven't done them for like a decade. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and what I discovered was that um, it's not that easy to set up a still life, you know? <laughs> and I was like, doggone it. That's the hardest part of, I think, of doing that. So this was just kind of my, my first one that I had gone back to doing. And I was like trying to like remember how I did this. Oh, why did I get all that, all that pattern fabric, you know? And it's like, because you know, you get lost in that patterning, you know, I feel like I gotta put that detail in. I thought, no, Al would just kind of, kind of just suggest the, the fabric. So anyways, that was just my first attempt. And then, uh, so anyways, it took me about three or four uh, tries to um, different um, still lifes. And then uh, then I finally did this one. I said, yeah, that's what I was used to do. And so uh, it just sort of like that muscle memory, that, that kind of thing started to came back. So, all right, that's that up to like the right about now. So I think I'm done with that part. So anyways, uh, I'll get to this in just a few, in just a second. But once again, I was telling you about all the different things in which, you know, about licensing and Lizzie knows as you are aware, her shirt is her one of her paintings. She gets a, you know, you get it. Do you take a photograph? Or you get it scanned. I, I took the photograph. For a photograph. Yes, yeah. Yes. There's many places online. Oh. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, that's her thing. And this is me. Uh, I have it. This is a. This is a, It's an inaugural appearance. Appearance because um, I, I finally lost some weight and could wear it. <laughs> so this would be a perfect thing. So yeah, and now and I'm going to say is that here, you know, this is these are options for your artwork too. Is uh, definitely take a good photograph at minimum because I think a lot of these uh, online things you have to at least have it 150 DPI. So that's a minimum, and so you, you're probably going to get a, a decent enough uh, thing if you got some photo editing uh, software on your computer. Get to know it really well. So. There's a lot of stuff, even just the, 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 the elements, photograph, ele I mean, Photoshop elements can do. So, um, but, uh, so anyways, I was just gonna tell you, just to show, I was wearing this earlier. Once again, this is one of my scarves, which is a, one of my paintings. I'm not gonna open that one up. Now this, now the challenge, of course, now this is, I got done at Spoonflower, and as you notice, oh look, it, it all blends together. Well, that's one of the things you need to probably learn is how to do a pattern repeat so that um, it doesn't end up being, you can see right where my, <laughs> this is the edge of my painting, this is where the other side comes, there's a little bit of line there. This is the first thing. 
exactly. So in Photoshop, but I took some of my my uh, flowers off of my thing and put it had the pins made. These are my art towels. You know? Yep. Spoon flower. So and uh, this is well. It, now I everybody's done cards, I'm sure. But this is one of the things I do. I um, I just you do print it on heavy paper and do the edges in gold. It just kind of is a little bit different than just a straight cut on there. This glue on there. And then this is my latest thing. <laughs> They're sticker heads. I'm calling it. They're, I don't know. They apparently this is a popular thing. So um, I just isolated the hat, the cat heads, and got those done. So. Um, So I'm just saying, you know, guys, all be open to all different things in which you can do with your artwork. I mean, don't just, you know, hang it on a wall. And um, so, I mean, for, for one of the first things that somebody said to me when I came in, she said, I said, well, yeah, is that your artwork? I said, yeah, I, you know, and I said, yeah, can I buy it? And so I was like, okay. So I mean, <laughs> I didn't say okay, but I mean, you know, that, so I'm just letting you know there's many opportunities for you to do with your art other than, you know, exhibit. But you have taken the, one of the most important first steps and that is, put your artwork out for people to see. Uh, no further ado, I will work on uh, do a demo, starting the demo. All right. So, oh, let's see. I am going to show you the colors that I would uh, else that I learned on, learned to mix colors with. Even though I got more colors out there than that, this obviously white, cadmium uh, yellow light. Cad red light. <coughs> One thing I did notice with the cad, the sometimes the mixing with uh, uh, acrylics or with or they mix a little bit differently, and um, then oil sometimes, and you get a little slightly different color. So we got ultramarine blue. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to put this burnt sienna, that would be one on there. And I, uh, let's see, what's the next one? Viridian green, this I love, and it looks so much better in oil, but you know, I don't paint in oil. And this is where I made the switch with the uh, Cornacridone magenta with alizarin. Uh, I was, because I was mixing the um, alizarin with the uh, red, uh, cad red light, and I would get a, um, it's a kind of a brown red, yeah. And so I switched to using um, uh, the uh, magenta instead. All right, all right. If you ever take a class from me or anything like that, or if you ever want to learn anything from me, the one, the most important thing I would tell you is, don't leave paint on your brush. <laughs> so I always, I always. Like just take Gal, he would always, you know, dip his stuff in his linseed oil and he would just, you know, he'd talk, go around and talk like this, he'd be cleaning it out. And um, so it's much easier to, I will leave my thing in there like that, but uh, I figure that's better than me trying to get paint out of it later on, even though I could soak it in alcohol, but. All right, so, um, you got into any questions? Any more questions or anything like that? Just uh, ultramarine and cerulean. Now this is a, this is the yeah I'd have burnt on umber up there. That's how I learned with Al. It would be like you know here's your if you place your your stuff you probably you all probably know this. If you pay, place your stuff in the same spot each time, then you when you you can paint like oh automatically almost. So but this is like warm and that's cool. Though um, some people say no this is cool that's warm. <laughs> Um, but this, for this palette, for this Al's teaching, this was, you know, opposite. So this was uh, warm and the cerulean was cool. But for this, it doesn't really matter. Yes, you got a question. What brushes do you like? Uh, I have a friend, uh, some of you may know her, Terry Stanley. She used to work for Jack Richardson. And Jack, you guys are familiar with Jack Richardson? Yeah. Well, um, I got them really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like these, uh, the Richardson. Um, they are, they're a synthetic uh, brush. I think this is a 750, I think there's a name on them. I'm not sure what the name of it is. But um, 
but I don't, she doesn't always work, she doesn't work there anymore. Mm -hmm. So I occasionally then I will get these, uh, especially when I work with the little ones. Uh, this Win Win Windsor Newton uh, University with the white bristle. So it's something that's going to hold up to, you know, working with acrylics and then that kind of thing. No, no, definitely not any natural bristles at all. So, all right. One of my favorite colors is orange. I'm going to take a little bit of that um, uh, cad light and the cad red. I always thought that orange was my, I decided early on in my life that orange was my favorite color. Because, you know, when you're a kid, everybody asks you what your favorite color is, and everybody says, you know, blue, red, or yellow, that kind of thing. And nobody was picking orange, and I said, well, I don't have to share. Orange was going to be my favorite color. I don't have to share that color with anybody. So that was my thought with that. Huh? So anyways, I just, uh, and <laughs> I wish I could do this. This would just amaze you if I could do this. But once again, I'll refer to Al a lot. Uh, he would mix all these paints in one spot right here, and um, he could change it, you know, from light to dark to light to dark to light to dark, you know, and and I'm like, how do you do that, you know? And, and he would do it. He would do it with oil. Oh, it had to be because of the oil, the, the um, uh, oil. Now he'd do it. And he could do it with my acrylics too. So, but my I usually end up all over the thing. So. Once again, I was talking about, uh, I think I mentioned, oh, finding that perfect lime green. And that's where I would come up with this viridian with the cad light, yellow light. And uh, this is what, this, so I'd be mixing these greens all the time. I just loved this green. Now what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff on my uh, thing here. So, uh, you know, this might be, end up being a, a leaf over here. I know this is, I had started this one after I'd done that one, and I thought, well, I need to do something um, to show you my thought process. Sometimes, and I'll add a little of this. I mean, there's just so, a little bit of the cad red light. It's something a little bit more of a bright olive. But I mean, I, there are so many different colors that you can, um, you know, paint, come up with. Except that unless you decide that you're tired of painting, you know, mixing greens, you know, so. And then also another favorite color of mine is a kind of a robin eggs blue. And um, I mean, this is, yeah, you can figure this one out. I mean, I'm not probably telling you guys anything new right here, but just kind of getting started, just showing what I, my thought processes are going on. Felicia, I've got some, oh, look, at there's a little orange art over there. And oh my gosh, look, at I'm painting over something I already painted. You know? It's okay, because I'll paint that out later on. Now this uh, ended up being a little muddy in some of these areas, so I like that next to there. That's okay. So, and you can also create your, um, like your uh, raw sienna, which is a nice color to use. Oops, I put too much. That red. Sometimes I forget how intense that cad red can be. But I'll look and see how I'm, I'm mixing it up here. A little bit of that green, and come up with your nice little. Raw sienna. Um, it's kind of that kind of color. It's, it's your raw sienna. Do you see that color there? Do you see that a little bit? That easier to see? So I'm just going to put that uh, probably in the green. I like to make little stripes sometimes when I in a green because, you know, think about those snake plants, you know, how they got all that var variegation on it and that kind of stuff. So, all right. So then, then we've got your, yeah, your raw sienna. Then, of course, you've got your burnt sienna. So we started kind of with the same color. Only I used the magenta this time instead of the cad red light. And uh, see, it's starting to get that little bit of that cad, uh, that burnt sienna kind of color. Now, I'm going to say burnt sienna is a, and the uh, raw sienna are very inexpensive paints. <laughs> so, it doesn't really necessarily make sense that you would go ahead and uh, create a burnt sienna 
you know, out of your cat red light and all that stuff. But, you know, this way you don't have to go out painting someplace or you're going to go somewhere. This way you don't have to take 20 million tubes of paint with you. So, like I'm doing, you can do it very, um, um, very limited. So, and of course you know that, uh, I don't know if you know that, but the magenta and the, and the um, viridian create a really nice, Get some nice purples out of that. I'm gonna lighten that one up here. You can see that color. I'm not off the thing, am I, or am I? Good. So, so then, let's see. So, once again, you're wondering why was I using? Why did I bring this along? What was I cleaning this off for? Uh, I, I don't paint with blue very much, and I don't know why, but I, I don't. Maybe it's because I didn't know. Some people say that, you know, the because uh, of that, well, is it warm or is it cool? So here, this is creating some texture going on here. Not very much, as you can see. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't take a lot in which to get uh, some color on your, your piece there. Create that little speck. Now, I'm not going to splatter <laughs> because... Uh, I'm messy enough as it is. But you know, just roll it on back. That kind of be free. It's just paint. It's just paint. And some of you may are aware of uh, the effect of uh, rubbing alcohol on uh, watercolor. Maybe some of you guys know what it's like uh, using it for. Uh, on thing, on, uh, with acrylics. Yep, make sure I got the, I just make sure I got the alcohol, not the water. I mean, excuse me a minute. Yes, I have the alcohol. So. I used to paint, uh, when I worked at uh, Green Bay Art Supply, um, I, I'd go out and do stuff with my sisters, and uh, we went to Cedarburg, and I saw some painted furniture there, and I said, well, I can do that, you know. And so I was telling Nancy, here you see this, it kind of gets my little river lights. I tell Nancy that, oh, I could do that. And so she said, oh, I saw this, this cabinet on the side of the road, and I'm going to have the, the bookkeeper go get it, you know. And so it was like literally a piece of junk. And uh, so she let me paint that while I was working, and uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was like my really first, my first attempt at doing something on that order. It was very primitive, very primitive. Yeah, and so it. But we had a little gallery there in the uh, in the in the shop, and you know I ended up having a little show. <laughs> so it was kind of nice. And then I had one of an artist that I really admired there from Green Bay. I don't know if anybody may have known Tina White. I thought she was this. You know, one of these people like, how come she wants to know me? You know, that kind of stuff. And she bought it. So I was like, oh, that's, I guess that made me, you know, legit. But, um, so then I had gone on to doing a few other things like, oh, you know, that I took uh, some uh, classes down to Chicago area and uh, for full finishing. And uh, the one I, you guys remember when Bob Vila used to do the uh, old, this old house? Yeah. And, uh, well, this gal that he had used for the full finishing was, um, had a class uh, in um, Phoenix Miller, that's her name. She taught some full finishing classes in uh, <laughs> Chicago. And I, so I went down there and uh, you know, learned from her just uh, working with oil glazes. That was like we do these sample boards and um, out of oil glaze. And at this time, it was fairly new. I, uh, then she said, oh, we're gonna seal them. And I said, oh, seal them with varnish, you know. We seal them with polycrylic. I said, no, that's gonna beat up. It's not gonna stick, you know. And so, uh, but it did. So um, I started using that uh, on my painted furniture and that stuff. Well, anyways, also I took, had taken that, you know, just here, I'm just sitting here creating some textures. Now, this, look at this shape here. That may potentially be a flower afterwards. So, but I, I took, um, you know, these, these full finishing classes and 
uh, ended up getting some, when I got back to Green Bay, I ended up um, doing people's houses and doing some restaurants, that kind of changing over, I don't know if you, anybody knew, heard of Grazzi's or not, but uh, changed that over to doing an Italian kind of a theme. It was a Shoney's at one time. So, but then it was like, it got to the point where, you know, yeah, people like to look at it, but they say, oh, do you, you know, you can't, like, you're not going to put anything on that table, are you? And it's like, I mean, like, use it, you know, it's supposed to be functional. And uh, so, um, I said, well, maybe it's time to do something different. And once again, that's kind of where that, where Lynn Nagler came in. I started doing painting the, doing uh, different objects, different things on um, the black canvases. And so, uh, Terry and I are good friends, and we both, you know, were doing our artwork and that stuff. And this opportunity to expand into a different market came up, which in Milwaukee, and it was um, called okay. Open Canvas. But, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, uh, this is a liquid uh, acrylic. I use that a lot because uh, when I was doing murals and stuff like that, you know, I buy it in the, the big sizes and that stuff. So, um, and it's just, and if you're going to work with a little brush, <laughs> it works so much better than it does if you, you uh, than a, than thick paint. So as you see, I mean, I've already kind of had done this one here. But I see I've got this up here against uh, background in there is, is some purple, which would look like maybe the backside of maybe I'm thinking it's a um, like a carnation kind of thing. Is that your zero size zero one? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I asked my kids to what they want what I want for Christmas. Oh, you get me a you know a bunch of these because they they don't really last that long. So you can see I'm just kind of trying to find. Isolate this here pink shape here, so maybe that one comes through. Oh, but oh, maybe this one might be a, oh, it might be the leaf. I'm not going to go all the way up because sometimes once you, you know, you got this blob. Let's see, oh, here's a blob right up here. It's like, what is that going to be? So once you, well, sometimes once you start painting in that negative space, oh, something else happens. So you see, I'm seeing I've got some stripey things like there in the green and the blue, and I kind of usually like to keep those as being um, leaves. Uh, because once again, I'm thinking of that, you know, that snake plant kind of thing. And here I am. You know, everybody knows what a flower looks like. You know, you got petals, you got a center, you got some leaves, you got a stem. So it isn't, um, they don't have to be photograph, you know, photo perfect, you know, so photorealistic or anything like that. You just have to suggest them because, like, you know, you have a big old bouquet, they're not all standing up like a soldier, you know, they're all kind of bunched together, and you're seeing all sorts of different kinds of shapes and stuff like that. So, if anybody would like to come up here and try and find some shapes, you're welcome to do so. Oh, good, we've got it. Somebody, somebody, yeah, yeah. I usually want a big flower like over here. And then I think, well, okay, let's bring a little red up over there, whatever, that kind of stuff. Just kind of, uh, and then the nice thing, though, is sometimes in, and I'd say I told you I just stopped painting this the other day, is I'll take a look at the background, and I will then maybe adjust my, the dark, so that maybe I'll, I'll yeah, take a minute here. Maybe more obvious this way. Like especially when I'm doing the larger ones. That, that this one I'll probably turn into fabric. But uh, if I'm doing a larger painting, that you know, taking a lot of detail into that I plan on hanging on the wall, even though I still make fabric on it, uh, is I'll I'll take it, I'll just draw like a circle on there. Put the chalk. Chalk's going to come right off. And then I'll say, well, can I make this here negative space? flow a little bit better around this here circle here. Just so that your eye kind of goes up and around and that kind of thing. So uh, just so you know, you've got your, because you know you got your third kind of stuff, that kind of thing. Um, and do I need to then maybe make this one a little bit bigger or make that a little bit smaller in order to get that negative space drawing your eye around? Because I really don't necessarily want your, 
the positive one to be what's doing all the work, but the negative space, you know, because that's the fun part, you know, like, it's, it's subtle sometimes, so. Oh, you think it's perfect? Yeah, I've got that fairly even. I got, you know, if you squint, you can maybe see a hot spot right there, right there. So, I mean, there are some hot spots right over here. But sometimes then I'll come in and I'll put a little dot in there instead. And then that'll end up, see if I, I'll show you over here. Yeah, I'll put a little dot right there. See how that fills that in and it's got, you've got some evenness of the, the what you call it. So, where's that other spot that I said was a hot spot? No, that was a... Uh, Actually, that was an old painting underneath there. <laughs> so that's that's how come I got some of these other you know textures on there. Actually, it was one that I had painted over and was trying to change it, and then I, I didn't like what I was doing, so I said, well, you know, it's just paint. I don't have to wait you know a couple months for it to dry. It's acrylic, and uh, I'll just take and put it all over there. So, um, huh? and then one of the things that I think I like that I like to do that people. Uh, are like, um, it, it kind of is a little bit of a, I guess it's a trompe l'oeil, you know, a trompe l'oeil, or just a fake, you know, uh, fool, fool the eye. Uh, like with the birds, I would do a little shading on the background there, to around, just on one side, just so it started looking um, a little dimensional. And I'd have them at fairs and that stuff. People walk in, is that quilt? And I said, no, it's just, you know, paint. So. So like I would take, now how would you gonna make that uh, dimension, that little bit on here, um, make it any kind of difference? Well, um, this is raw umber, this is not black. This color I have on there, that I use for the background there. And so I'll, then I'll sometimes will take black and just do like, you know, like it's got a, a shade or something like that. It's much more effective uh, on a, something where I use a light background, you know, to give you a shade. And people say, is that quilted or is that mosaic? That's one of the other things that they will say. And so um, it's just the, uh, well done. <laughs> you didn't finish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of got in the zone and then I was like, oh wait. I'm no, that's okay. That's all right. All right, good. Oh, sure. No problem. I mean, it's, it's just, one, I do plein air. Well, that's the other thing. I didn't really talk about plein air. And so, as you can imagine, if I'm out on a hot day, I, you know, I put my paints out, you know, I gotta do this all the time, you know, spritz it. I just spritzed it with alcohol, but that's all right. <laughs> it's at that, those of you that know that, you know, you get it on your clothes, you know, put it up, you know, put some rubbing alcohol on it. You can even use, like, if you're in a pinch, uh, hand sanitizer, because there's, you know, um, and it doesn't dry as fast as alcohol, and get rid of um, uh, the paint. Anyways, uh, I've, I've painted in below zero, I mean at below zero, for below freezing, and that's when the alcohol comes in really handy, you know, because it keeps it uh, uh, um, loose, yeah. And also maybe some occasionally gives it a little texture because it separates it a little bit. But anyways, I encourage you all to try plein air, just because you know, it's all, it's supposed to be all about the light. And, well, you know, why, you know, you think it's going to be up there, but it's, you know, you're down there painting, all of a sudden it's over here. So it just helps you to, helps you to see. It also helps you to make a quick decision and not overthink. That's why, you know, obviously, you know, if I was painting oil, it'd be a little different, but because I paint acrylic, you know, even, even just a decision to like, yeah, I don't like this. I can paint over this, you know, just, it's just not working, you know, and so um, that is, um, that's, uh, that's one of the things I like about acrylics, I would say, so, but um, I, I, my, I, once, I, I mentioned Terry Stanley again. She worked for Jack Richardson, and Jack, uh, and she got involved with, Jack Richardson got involved with the Susan K. Black Foundation. Susan K. Black was the wife of this billionaire, you know, oilman, and uh, she was a painter, and she died, and so he wanted to do something to honor her. And so they would have uh, workshops that out in Wyoming, and they'd have like, oh goodness, Raymond Kinsler out there, Bateman out there, 
Combs out there, just all these you know big name people that Jack Richardson know would you know also be painting over there, and you can go to their workshop and just you know learn from them. And um, anyways, uh, so she would, but she would take because it was out in Du Bois, Wyoming. You know, there's no art supplies out there, and so if you forgot your stuff or you're traveling from all over, you you know, well, so we brought, we'd pack up her truck and head out to Wyoming and set up a table at the workshops. And so, um, anyways, uh, I got to know of some of the artists there, and uh, one of them was this Everett Ray Kinsler, who, uh, Raymond Everett Kinsler, I always get that back. You know, some of you may be familiar with him. He was a, uh, he would paint senators and <coughs> celebrities and all this stuff, and he would, uh, he apparently had an affair with Catherine Hepburn, you know, that kind of stuff, so. And, um, I, he, he would say, and, I, and he actually bought, oh yeah, we had the opportunity to like have a little exhibit, and even as a worker, you know, I could bring some stuff, and so I had a little piece that I had done, and uh, he bought it, so I thought that was kind of nice, so I'm in his collection, yeah, 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 so, but uh, anyways, brag, no, 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 uh, but he had said that if you want to paint better trees, do portraits, and if you want to do better portraits, paint trees, so. Raymond Everett Kensler. He was he was like mentored by somebody who was mentored by a uh, singer sergeant. So you know there's sort of this line of that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, if you want to paint better, you know, get out there and do something different so you can see. You know, and so if you're like if you're stuck in the studio, you know, get out and do some painting outside. Give it a try, and then and then then try and paint the color you see. You know, and you'll see that. I mean, you stop it. I, this, I like to always tell all that uh, that first that first day at class with Al, he had this still life set up, you know, and it was a nice still life, and and he had this, you know, white drape in the back of it, and I'm like, he said, you know, paint the color you see, and I said, well, you know, it's white. <laughs> That's what I say. He says, no, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. And he said, no, you know. So I'm like, I'm not gonna, oh yeah, because you know, it, it reflects the light just reflects off of everything. And so, oh yeah, but then, but, but meanwhile, even still trying to do that, it wasn't that easy. I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to bring, you know, a paper bag and go, <laughs> and then I can see the colors, you know. <laughs> or I get some of these, you know, uh, what are those faceted eyeglasses, you know, and I wear those, and maybe I can see the colors. So it wasn't so hard, but it was like, you know, once you, you know, once you could start to see, it was, oh yeah, you know. And, and then the next thing I said, this is a color C. And I mix, I mix it up, and I said, yeah, this is the color I see. And I put it down there, and I was like, but it doesn't look like it should be that color. How do you get it down there, especially when you put in that color next to color? And you say, yeah, that's exactly what it was supposed to be. So yeah, it works, that idea. Paint the color you see, even though it doesn't make any sense. That's what I'd say, if it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And one of the other things that uh, Al said is, uh, he never used white straight out of the tube. Even though I'm using white, but this I'm not doing still life and that kind of stuff. But because he said, you know, like, you know how like we like to use white for the highlights and that kind of stuff, you know? And he always mixed it with a little color. And he said, because it looked like pinholes, like you, you know, like you had a hole in the canvas there is what he would say. It looked like that pinhole. It's always just a little note, you know, put a little color in your, your white so that it's not just straight out of the white too. So, but, um, Anyway, so I, there, you know, if you guys want to come up and do some more, uh, you got me some more questions about my, uh, what I do, have my reproductions and that stuff, uh, you know, printing on, on uh, uh, fabric and other things. So, uh, more questions? Yeah. I asked, what's that block? Help me out. How are you getting your flower? How do you see flower? Which flower? Right there? Oh, okay. Maybe you have any questions? That was your question. Okay. okay. I'm not going to put black on this one. Yeah. But I do go over the I do go over that background several times because it doesn't. Uh, the thing about acrylics is that um, they're not always solidly opaque. You know, they, they sometimes. So I mean, I have to. You know, just to, even on even on the raw umber, I have to cover over uh, a couple times just to get that. So. And then as I'm doing that, of course, the, it, uh, it changes a little bit, so changes what exactly I have been painting. The other thing is, um, uh, I think I mentioned that about Lynn Nagler painting on a black canvas. 
and he would use black gesso. And I would use, when I was painting with black, I would use black gesso because it was probably the most opaque, you know, black paint that uh, I could, uh, you know, it was more opaque than you know, the, the liquid stuff here. Any more questions? Anybody? <laughs> I'm cleaning my brush in, in water, so I, I can do that. I mean, I can do it with these, yeah. It just takes, um, you know, a little bit more uh, to um, you know, get a, a liquidy for a little brush. That's a that's the issue I have with this. So uh, I I don't carry. I mean, these I I don't normally have these with my plein air stuff, just because um, it's I don't know. <laughs> Cause I just don't because it's they these would really dry outside let's put it that way so so now when I'm doing some of this stuff uh now something like this one here I probably would not do like you remember the purple one and the black one where I did a lot of that little that more of I call a decorative embellishing because um there's an awful lot of little things over here and so I would just probably just make this a little bit more pronounced to be a um I don't know if, it, if, if, if it's looking more like a flower or not anymore. Let's put a little center in there and start getting a little bit of that idea. So is that looking at all like a, a flower at all or just a little bit? Okay, I'll go in here and make a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to change. And like I say, oh yeah, well let's see. Um, here's another one that looks like it could be. So normally like I say I just, uh, I don't um, mark them out like this because and it takes too much time. I figured, well, sometimes when I when once get once something gets done, then I end up changing something also. So this is a I use uh, I think I can use chalk. Oops, I'm sorry, chalk. But it doesn't. It's not. Uh, it doesn't. Um, I discovered in my plein air painting when I was using that that I lose. It, I couldn't get as detailed. And uh, I would, um, and then they would come off, you know, because it's a little bit more. This one's got probably a little bit of wax in there, just a little bit. So although I don't, I don't like to necessarily use this on a dark background because then if I want some of that dark to be exposed, it will, it doesn't come off as easily, wipe off as easily, uh, and it will then. Um, so then I have to come back and kind of do my my raw umber on top of it, you know, that kind of thing, so, but. No, it's just a, just a charcoal pencil, Gen, I think it's General's, General's, um, yeah, I think it's a General, I think it is, you know, the, you know, the, it's the brand, General, you know, General makes a, uh, art, uh, makes a char, charcoal and that kind of stuff, so, but. As you see, I just, these here, I'll just indicate some of these here, and uh, maybe I'll make some changes, maybe I'll keep it, maybe I'll add something else on there. I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's just pain, I know. Oh, and another thing I always like to say is nothing venture, nothing mm -hmm. gained. And so, like I say, you guys, uh, you know, go ahead and enter all the wraps that you can. Go ahead and do that. I mean. Why not? I guess you can, right? You're not limited to, if you want to go up north someplace, you can enter up there, right? I mean, it's not like you have to be in, in the same town. No? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that take advantage of it. It's a way to, to get yourself exposed. It's, um, everybody here has been so nice. You meet, you meet a lot of nice people. And so, it's just, um, yeah. And I'd also like to say that uh, sometimes you get an award, sometimes you don't, but you just try. Nothing, like I say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And uh, I'm just going to say that. You learn a lot. There we go. Question about the layering technique. Are you working like big brushes to small brushes as you're doing big spaces down to little spaces? You go back and forth as you need to as it develops. Yeah, I can. Yeah, you know, as so I can say that what that last one that you had seen on the. Um, <laughs> like on this one, this one I, you know, I, I painted 
several times over just to, you know, because I couldn't decide, I couldn't decide. And then I just got so frustrated, you know, I ended up throwing some more stuff on it. But yeah, and then I, the, um, I had some benefits from my husband for, to go back to school. And so he was a veteran. And so um, I was taking some painting classes and I, first time I ever used glaze. <laughs> I was like, why do I need glaze? I mean, I, I've got water. I work with acrylic, I got water, but I was like, whoa, you know, so I started using started using glaze on, on my work and I was like, what a difference, you know, you get that, you know, it doesn't run, the first thing, but it also, uh, I think it was, um, like I said, I don't know why I just never used it, probably because I tend to be a little cheap, you know, and if I say, I got water, you know. So, but yeah, this one here, several, you know, I had a couple layers on here. And then even on here, I couldn't decide what color I was going to paint the, the background, you know. So I just had it lighter, and I thought, well, I don't know, I guess, I, I don't even know why I decided that color. But uh, as you can see over in here, maybe you can see a few of these little spots over there. Oh, I was talking about doing a little bit of um, uh, shading on there on there at the, uh, in the blue there in the background, so it looks a little more dimensional. Probably not necessarily on screen, but maybe more so in, in my real life. This one is 36 by 36, which all my florals have been 36 by 36, so. Anything else? So, uh, once again, if you want to come and paint, feel free. You want to ask me about in my uh, uh, stuff that I do, uh, feel free to, you know, do so, come and ask me. So other than that, uh, I don't know if there's anything more. Like I said, if you got any more questions, you know, ask, ask Lizzie where at all the places that she gets her stuff done. So, oh, let's go. We're doing a little more advertising here. <laughs> the point, the point, so. Yeah. All right, well good, well thanks. Thank you everyone.